Hiya. Welcome everybody to Alexandra Valley. It's a oh wait. It's a bit good here, isn't it? Um, first off, this is chapter 55. Thank you very much for the 2,000 of you selling the show out a couple of months ago. You absolute fucking legends. Good afternoon, didn't we? Yeah. So it works today. We're going to have seven matches. You guys are going to make a fuck ton of noise. You're probably going to drink a lot. I don't care what you do. I just want you all to have a good time. Now you're going to have a good time, aren't you? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Um, now there's a couple of little things I do at the start of every show. First of all, give me a cheer if you've been to see progress before. Yeah. Give me a cheer. This is your first time watching Progress. It's a fucking expensive round, isn't it? There's a lot of people planning this for a long time. Fucking good on you. Um, look, I'm not going to talk loads today, because to be honest, I want you guys to watch a fucking load of great wrestling in front of this amazing, fucking beautiful building. Um, Thank you all so much for listening to the instructions and coming to this building, this part of the Alexandra Palace and not accidentally ending up in a wedding fair. <laughs> Full of a lot of people who are very confused. <laughs> Did they? Sometimes, doing this job for five and a bit years, sometimes you're like, never heard that chant before. <laughs> this is one of those moments where that, you know, I never heard that chant before. Because of how specific it is to this actual event, we will never fucking hear it again. <laughs> so, whether you've been to see us before or you've not been to see us before, most people are aware of the one rule of progress. Remember, I want you all to have good time today. I'm aware it's a big old flat room. Try not to stand up. I mean, during entrances and during the end of matches, I get that people get carried away. But remember, there's people sat behind you. And think of all the people around you. Be considerate, because we are one big, happy family of wrestling fans. Two thousand wrestling fans watching a fucking British independent wrestling show, because 2017 is the greatest year in professional wrestling.
magnificent for the following contest. This match is a ladder match for the Progress Wrestling Tag Team Championship! The winners will be the first team to scale the ladder and retrieve the Tag Team titles. Introducing first the challengers, the team of King Blackos, Chris Brooks, C. C. have been the ones that CCK have been chasing this whole time. They debuted back in Manchester all those months ago now. And then went straight... Oh! Oh! That was a special. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, went straight into a tag team title match with British Strong Style and claimed the tag team titles in their first match at Chapter 50, proving the British Strong Style were beatable. The first time we'd seen them beaten since they formed, really. And, uh, of course... What happened in Birmingham happened, the tag titles ended up going back to British Strong Style. Ever since CCK have been on the road back to these tag team titles. And uh, unsurprisingly, it's gone straight to the outside. Oh. Here at Alexander Palace. See Brooks are there tied up in a ladder. I'm going to be honest, those, uh, those ladders aren't actually put there for, uh, for climbing so much as uh, imagine they maybe on. Oh, Tyler Bate and Chris Brooks at the same time with kicks to their respective opponents. Of course, it was Chris Brooks who defeated Trent Seven at Chapter 54, and Tyler Bate defeating Kid Lycos. Of course, the ladder match presidency takes... Well, president, yeah. Well, the ladder, a ladder match beats a singles match. I mean, you know, we talked about it at the time, it was, a, for me, a bad tactical move by British Strong Style. They overplayed their hand, and the, the mind game's advantage, the momentum advantage coming into this match has to be with CCK. Brooks with a kick into the turnbuckle, into the face of Tyler Bate, and now... the uh, slender, long man from... West Midlands. Yeah, Callum, you mentioned that word, momentum, and I really think that's a key oh! component in this match. Rope hand twisting neck breaker. Chris Brooks. Brooks. Lycos has been taken out on the outside by Trent, so Brooks is fighting two on one at this point. Oh, seven and fiery off his Kabashi style chops in the corner. Seven out. Brooks into the other side of the ring. The eternally cocky Trent Seven. Oh, beautiful. I bet they're not moist at all. Oh, oh goodness. Trent Seven, no. He's not landscaping. He's not the brightest. Oh, Chris Brooks with a kick into the head of 
Seven with a head of steam coming into the corner. He goes for a chop of his own. Oh! What impact from Seven on Brooks! And that's that British strong style that they claim to be the inventors of. Oh! On Anderson S with that DDT there off the fake chop, and Kid Lycos is back in the ring. Ladder match, of course, all four men are legal at any one point. Oh, here comes the human highlight reel. Lycos sk skips through the ropes. Seven didn't see him. Coming kick to the head. Top rope. Oh, we can ruin him, Mike! on the top rope! Oh! And a cannonball into the back of Seven! That was the uh, CCKF. Their special Alexander Palace gear. Oh! Tyler Bain dumps Lycos on his face. Yeah, the kid Lycos definitely likes to fly, and that's the sort of thing that he's want to, want to be getting the advantage of. Obviously, the smallest member of this match, but the most nimble member of this match, and that is going to weigh in the favour of the CCK if you're going to have to get up there ladders quick. But Chris Brooks is also very tall, and that's also going to play in his advantage in a ladder match. We have a third ladder in play now, and Brooks kicks it straight to the face of British Strong Style. There's also a number of ladders set up on the stage across from us as well. There's ladders everywhere at this point. Looks like a TLC pay-per-view up here. Comes Lycos, up and over by Brooks! Oh, assisted Sope con Hilo, and Lycos onto his feet. He's pumped up for this one. I guess that goes for Adam. This could be a, an early attempt to grab the belts from CCK. Yeah, and this is the tactics. You want to take your men down, but you want to take them outside of the ring. Keep them the furthest away from the title as possible. But Don't think seven. that one's high enough. Oof. So maybe for Brooks, not for Lycos. Other size ladders are available. I should hope so. Otherwise, it'd be a very unfair ladder match you'd set up here. Now. I mean, Chris Brooks is the only person likely to, to win the match at this point. I mean, I'm okay with that. Well, I'm definitely okay with it. It's one person I don't see pull those belts out of. It's the rather timid Ezra <laughs> Seven who is almost the same height as Chris Brooks at this point. Small the back by Brooks. Brooks now. So he's sent to the outside and oh, look at a man who might actually be able to. Here he goes. Oh. Bain sends Brooks off. Brooks over. The top. Oh! Let it into the head by Tyler Bate, the former WWE UK champion. Steel run right in the forehead of Brooks, but keep your eye on Lycos. Skins the wolf. Oh! What a super cap! Suka kick by Bate. Super oh, he's looking for that full move from Lycos. You hear the impact of that. What are you shitty little wolf? Well, that shitty little wolf is doing the right thing and grabbing a ladder. He's got Tyler Bate down. But a hell of a match with Tyler Bate at Chapter 54 as well. It's a well used ladder. This position's precariously in the corner now. Oh no, surely not. Goodness, no! Knee lift into the chest of Bate. Bate puts the brakes on. Back elbow catches Lycos coming in, but here comes Brooks. Oh, Brooks caught by Bate. Ah! Oh! What an impact! An exploder suplex. The coccyx of Brooks is smashing into the wrong. On the line of a shotgun drop kick. Because sends bait. It's an incredibly dangerous match here. What is Lycos thinking now? Oh, impact of that. No. Oh, God. Oh, oh, my God. Dragon suplex from seven onto the ladder. Now, we know that Kid Lycos has a shoulder injury coming into the, this match as well, which will play into a factor, but I mean, both. Chris Brooks, is he wearing that support on his shoulder? My God! Lycos could be a non-factor going forward in this, this matchup for the impact of that Dragon Suplex, and now Seven and Brooks are on their knees. We're yeah. back to our Chapter 54 match, Brooks and Seven. Yeah, you mentioned that injury from Lycos. I know he's been taking time off to heal, but with an injury like a shoulder injury, is one of them that can linger for a long time, and a high-impact move on a ladder like that is certainly going to make it uncomfortable. Oh, and now Chris Brooks showing a bit of pretty strong style of his own. 
with the chops back on seven. Seven ducks. He'll be going for that. Oh my god, the impact of it. Too much standing lariats on each other. Here comes seven. Oh, and another one. Brooks down to his knees and seven slumped on top of him. Here comes seven again. Head of steam. Brooks ducks the close line. Oh, what a lariat by Chris Brooks. Hurt his own arm there. Yeah, you're absolutely right to mention the shoulder injury of Kid Lycos. That is going to affect his ability to climb a ladder. So you have to say for CCK, tactically, Chris Brooks should be the one going for those Titan titles. I think so. Now he's building out his team, going to the outside! Oh, and it's so big on Hilo from Brooks, takes down seven. Well, Tyler Bate now, the only competitor in the ring. Catching sight himself in our big fuck off screen. It's quite big. Here comes Tyler! Oh! What elevation from the young man! Wiping out both Trent Seven and Chris Brooks on the outside. You see Lycos now saying that shoulder. Now I know, I know what Lycos is thinking here, but he needs to go for them titles. Oh he should be going for the titles. Well, this is the, the equation. Do you try and do more damage to weaken them to have another shot? A better shot later on. Look at position, there's Ladders. He runs on it! Ladder assisted, saw Neo to the outside. Shades of Shelton Benjamin. Furniture in this match. Tyler, Tyler Bate. Oh. Double leg by Tyler Bate. Smart by Brooks there, moving that ladder out of the way. He knew that there was a possible impact there. Oh. Oh. Surely not. No. Oh my God. What strength by Tyler Bate. One half of the defending tag team champions. Here at Chapter 55, one off a pretty strong start. And... Yeah, that... has to be said. You might not like them, but... Yeah, I mean, the credentials of a strong style speak for themselves. Tyler Bate, of course, former WWE UK champion, two-time tight team champion, Trent Seven, the first ever three-time champion in any division in progress. Oh, it's getting a bit... A little bit Terry Funk in here. I wouldn't come near him if I was you, boys. Oh, oh. Brooks is down! Lycos is down! Oh, Trent, my... Oh. Oh. to try and serve in there. Nasty impact by... Tyler Bate going for it again. I mean, that's the technique, isn't it? Brooks stops it. Oh, and now... Oh! A chair shot, just putting the throats of Tyler Bate into the rung of the ladder. And the ladder is the only thing keeping Tyler Bate on his knees. I spoke about their use of the furniture. They, they... Their innovation in these types of matches are what have made CCK the hottest tag team in independent wrestling. Four on by seven since Lycos to the outside. Brooks stops it. Opening up the ladder. Holding it open. Oh! And this is the prelude to the one and the only sick fucking tag move. It's the Alexandra Palace. You said the electric ballroom then. <laughs> Force of habit. Sound their approval for the sick fucking tag move that is. Well, it's put CCK in a position when now they need some. Well, let's get a decent sized ladder involved, baby boys. Feeling it. Could be looking for that 
rope. Spring Lariat misses. Oh! Watches the line straight to the face. Tyler Bate looks like he might be the first back to his feet. Tyler Bate has in his, his grasp of the ladders. Like us now. Using his momentum. His, Bate tries to get his, his fingers off the top of the ladder. This could end very... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my. It's a terrible position for Lagos to be in. What? Oh my god! Lagos is nearly reaching for that bolt up top of Benzalan! Oh! Oh, pretty strong style just shifting the weight of that ladder and sending Lycos into our ring crew. That was incredibly dangerous. The ring crew might just save Kid Lycos' career. Safe to say that the progress ultras here and a sold out Alexandra oh. Palace are firmly behind CCK. And That's a bigger ladder. Yep, I think I just got my wish for the, uh, the big ladder. And if I may say, it also looks quite sturdy, which is nice. Well, it looks like British strong style have got this one in the bag. I mean, this is the longest period of time where, where they've been isolated in the ring on their own. And they need to get up there. Lycos head will be a non-factor. Tyler Bay is heading up while Trent Seven is gesticulating. Well, they don't see Chris Brooks. Brooks now with Tyler Bay on his shoulders. Tyler Bay trying to fire oh. off! Oh. Well, sick fucking tag move by Chris Brooks. I guess he's a sick single tag move. Kids beat us. Yeah, he's got a ladder on his own. Oh! My God, the end! Back into the face of Trent Seven. And Brooks now. He's not got far to go. The tallest man in this match. Fingertips away from those tag team shots. Oh. And into the face with a ladder from Tyler Bate. Well, Tyler here looking to rearrange some furniture. Oh, no. This is going to potentially could be bad news for Brooks. He's got plans for Brooks here. And Brooks is out on the top of that ladder. Tyler Bates. All he has to do is climb over the limp body of Chris. Oh my! Oh, no. Surely not. Is he looking for Tyler Driver 97? Brooks lowering his center of gravity there. Oh, chop it to the chest of Bates. Who they are. There he goes, Bate. Bate not going for the titles again. And this is pretty strong style's problem. Their ego is just getting in the way again of getting the job done, but he's got him hooked here. Oh my god, surely not. Remember? Brooks fighting. Brooks is fighting out. Oh. Brooks. Oh my god! Oh! It's going in. Brooks is. Brooks is in the championships! CCK are your new Progress Wrestling Tag Team Champions! And like you said, Matt, 
Tyler Bate! His ego got in the way of it! He wanted to hit that big move on Chris Brooks! And frankly, it cost him! And Tyler Bate had here! A meeting with a ladder on his way down! And this is it, CCK's journey to this point has meant the absolute world to them and each and every one of these Progress Ultras. And like you said, let's put impartialness to one side and say congratulations to CCK. This is a rightful tag team title reign they always should have had. By virtue of the scheduling, at least, we know this one will definitely be longer than the first reign. And long may it continue, CCK, our new tag team champions.
Series semi final against Tony Storm. That wasn't anything Tony Storm did, it was just a freak accident. It's not like Tony broke her leg, so there's no animosity there. But what? Oh, Man, you call me by, by Black. But it, this is a match that's going to have a lot of significance to Dahlia for that reason. Storm with the neck bridge, rolls out, flips up and takes the arm. Those women showing their technical wrestling acumen. The headlock takeover by Tony Storm crowning the challenger. Yeah, this is a really good example of what's happened to Tony since she's had this title. She's defended this title three times and she's growing each time with them defenses. Sometimes they say a wrestler makes a title or a title makes a wrestler. Well, I think they're in perfect harmony, these two. They are growing together it's as Tony Storm is taking on the, uh, the, the leadership of this women's division here in progress. And then, of course, after that match where she broke her leg, that was Dolly Black's last match in the UK until they had to return to New Zealand to, to sort their visas. And, and Dolly Black, you know, she talked about this on social media, she had to watch from afar as the first women's champion was crowned. Oh! Shock and drop kick by Black since Tony Storm into the corner. Back kick. Sent Storm over. Oh! There's a change in her attire. Oh, it's Tony Storm with a, a trip. A change in footwear from Dahlia Bl Black. She's moved to those kick pads and... Yeah, and they've, they've, they've kick pads actually give extra support because they're wrapped around your boot. They keep your ankle nice and tight, as well as protecting your legs, obviously, and shins from kicks. But they will give her a little bit more support, and, uh, support hopefully a little bit more flexibility as well. Dahlia Black very much the underdog in this match. You would have to say Tony Storm, a champion in Japan. Of course, a semi-finalist in the Mae Young Classic. Well, when the Progress Wrestling Women's uh, Championship was introduced, it was mentioned, of course, designed by, by Leather Rebels. And I had a little hand in it, but the concept itself actually came from a conversation with Dahlia Black about the goddess Athena, who's represented on the Progress Wrestling Women's Championship, the, the goddess of art, the goddess of war, and a hip attack. Which is the word I was called that. But Dolly Black had a big hand in designing that championship, and she hasn't seen it at all since... Oh! Well, she saw that one coming! That was that. I want to talk about those head attacks for a second, if I can. Well, Black with a head of steam. We've seen this before. Double knees into the corner for Black. And the second one catches Storm. And she goes for that. Oh, oh. incredible. But Tony Storm had scouted. Pulls her out of the corner. Has that... Has that leg? He's going for that leg trap. Black misses with the Enzigurian, and now still Tony Storm has that leg trap. Oh! oh it's not Jeremy with the leg trap. One right on the back of Black's head. Tony Storm out. Running. Hip attack. Yep. Looks the leg. Fisherman Suplex keeps the bridge. Pass down for a count of two. And only a count of two by the defending champion. Yes, I was going to say, I want to talk about the same attacks just a second. If you remember the Super Strong Style 16 final, uh, the, the, the women's title match, 
we heard Tony Storm dive to the outside on Ginny and heard the mighty thud that we couldn't see, Glenn. Oh, black out. Onto the knee. We saw this against... Ginny powers it back oh. on and dumps her on her face! Oh, man, while in that, that Japanese strangle hold, isolating that arm as well. Extra leverage in that. But this is a back and forth contest. It, it has to be said, neither, neither woman having a, uh, a significant advantage so far. Dahlia may be going high risk here. Yeah. And Dahlia with the second rope. Second rope, dark side of the moon stop, but you got the knees up. Now, Tony Storm. Could be going for the version of an air raid crash. And, oh, no, oh. onto the knee. Oh. Makes the cover. That's makes the count. I don't know if you noticed that, but Tony actually had Dahlia's arm hooked as well, and he put all that pressure on the shoulder as well as the neck region. It's a really uncomfortable landing for Dahlia Black. I'm looking for that power driver. Yeah, and that strong zero power driver is... Oh, Black just caught him with a forearm off the back of it! And now Storm retaliates! And Tony's arms traded forearms with some of the best of them in Japan. with those forearms kicked to the stomach. After the two women were treading off the middle of the ring. And we've seen these kicks as well. Tony Storm catches the right leg. That's the right leg again, and now powers back up. Oh, buckled on the back of Dahlia's head, just hit directly on the turnbuckle. She could be out. Strong zero. Strong zero, Paul Driver. One, two, and... See on Tony Storm's face. People don't generally kick out the strong zero power driver. <laughs> Tony Storm could be going for it again. Oh, Black managing to shift away to stuff it. Going. Makes the pin. Two. And only a count of two. Oh, she got all. Shades of the Kiwi Bonsai, as you say. And now, Dahlia rolls Tony into the middle of the ring. Could be... She's heading into the second rope. Dahlia now, on the top rope. Could be time to the dark side of the moonshot! Lands it! Cover! Two! And... Only a count of two! Yeah, and Dahlia needs to keep on top of Tony Storm. She has the advantage. She needs to find something to get the job done. Tony Storm is too dangerous to be leaving on her own for this, uh, this amount of time. Yeah, she's taking a little bit too long. You saw before the match doing those. See, Tony Storm's up already. Strength exercises. Oh my, oh my God! <laughs> German suplex straight the back of the head, strong zero! Keeps a hold of it! Holds the position, second oh pile driver! God. Oh my god! Has to be One, it. two! And Tony Storm is still the Progress Wrestling Women's Champion! Yeah, but it remains that Tony Storm is still the pound for pound best wrestler in the Progress Women's Division.
So we have the man who's doing the challenge. Let's see who's going to rise to the open challenge. history in this ring right now of course these two a long time tag team the leaders and these of course had the match at chapter one back in the garage you were there Glenn and for me as we said that was arguably the match that put progress on the map on that debut show exactly the phrase I was going to say is my skill jumps over to the outside Zach it was the the match that put progress on the map Gallery exactly right Incredible contest then, we've, we've seen uh, various incarnations, we've seen Zack in the box at Unboxing Live. Yeah, we, one of the last times we saw Marty Scurll here in progress, he was teaming with Zack Sabre Jr. But you never really know with the villain what's going on in his head. Oh. Yeah, he 
made his debut as Party Marty Snow in the early days of Progress, but then was reincarnated as the villain and became Progress champion. Oh, lifting sack up by the arm and tapping on his back. Yeah, just continuing to go after that arm of Sabre, and, and uh, it's quite an interesting tactic. Obviously, Zack Sabre Jr. favours the arm and the arm bar, to be specifically, as well as the Oma Plata that he likes to apply. So maybe Marty trying to go for a bit of a psychological advantage as well here, going after hey, oh, Sabre's favourite body part. Yeah, Marty's got dethroned Will Osprey at Chapter 25 for a long title reign, was a two-time Progress champion, the only two-time Progress world champion to this point. Until he was dethroned last year at Brixton, and we haven't seen Marty Skrull since January. It's, uh, he's been around, you know. <laughs> I mean, what a 2017 it's been for Marty Skrull. Yeah, both for him and Zack Sabre Jr. who put out this open challenge. I mean, oh, Zack and, uh, and indeed Marty have uh, been fairly busy over in Japan and, and indeed the States as well. If you're watching in the States, you can go get Marty Skrull's shirt in Hot Topic. Yeah. You certainly can, the Villain Club shirts are uh, available in your local hot topic. If you, if you have a local hot topic. Oh, bit attempt now. And it's, it's always to see with these two, they, they have an up and down relationship, but there's always been that competitive side. I remember meeting these two nearly 10 years ago, even when they were teaming as the leaders. Both men wanted to be the best at what they did. And now you've got you've to gotta believe that's exactly why Skirl is here. He's come back. State his claim to be the best technical wrestler in the world. And let's also not forget, he still had another clash in progress at Chapter 30, last year's Super Strong Style, and that was Zack Sabre Jr. coming out on top. Marty Skrull won the one in Chapter 1. This is the rubber match over five years in the making. So says that for you, guys. Certainly the right place to do it here at the uh, Alexandra Palace. And of course, uh, Marty Skrull has managed something that Zack Sabre Jr. hasn't, and that's to be progress wrestling. Champion with a back crack down. The man for the Alice Sheppy. Sabre now to the outside. Marty Skrull throwing up the, uh, the two sweets, of course. Uh, Marty, a member of the, the Bullet Club. A little homage to his stable mate, Kenny Omega, there. And Saxon Virginia manages to catch. Joint manipulation, that is Zack Sabre Jr.'s game. He loves to isolate those small joints and just manipulate, just grind away in the boat. It's one of the most painful. Oh, European up and go by Sabre. Catches the villain in the corner. But floats over with the two so extra. Go for the armbar. Yeah, good. You can separate the hands here. Now an ankle lock by. Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah, and then like, Sabre there readjusted, not happy about getting that armbar, wasn't confident, went back straight down to the legs and back to that ankle once again. Bending the ankle inwards, I think, from the Spanish point, didn't it? Villain, Ross, Sabre, up! Oh. Only a count of two. Oh, big uppercut by Sabre Jr. catches Marty in the ropes. It could be a backslide attempt by the villain. Zack Sabre Jr., the the leaner and slightly taller of the two. Marty with a slightly more muscle mass than his leader's tag team partner. Who knows if he still is indeed. Oh! Pele kick into the arm by Sabre! This is with a kick, sweeps the leg. Great transition by Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah, and you don't know where Zack Sabre Jr. is going to come at you from, where he's going to come high, low, in the middle. He's just an absolute... Again, we talk about adaptability before, and that's what Sabre brings to a fight. Yeah, he can attack any body part he wants, has a wealth of submissions. I mean, we saw in Super Strong Style against Jack Sexsmith, as a sporting competitor, he avoided that injured shoulder and went for the legs instead, got the job done. Well, kicks into the chest there, but... Oh, oh. and caught the leg and... Oh, slap, palm strike. Oh, no. Yep, palm strike. Sends the villain down. A single finger salute. The villain now, Marty Skrull, brought by his hair. Second one, and the third. 
Backs Marty into the corner. Marty up and over the top. Oh, Marty with a forearm straight to the jaw of Sabre. Oh, it's Sabre! Oh! Oh, there's an octopus hole using the ropes as well. Spoke about his travels in Japan, clearly uh, finding, refining the, 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 school, uh, the skills, I should say, that, that took him there. Sabre slipped on the outside. Now Marty Scott takes advantage of it. Wraps him up in the ring apron. Zach tries to escape. Skirl up and over. Oh, oh. my God! Oh, and you, you, you saw Sabre trying to adjust where the angle of where his face was, and it actually turned out worse. We got kicked right in the side of the head there. You know that blunt force trauma to the back of the head certainly not good for, for anyone, but you know, Zach Sabre Jr. at least looking after his... It's pretty features. Can I throw one more fact at you, gentlemen? Zach Sabre Jr., the most successful competitor in the history of Super Strong Style. Marty Skrull, the most successful competitor in the history of the Thunder Bastard match. Sunset flip by the villain. Marty. Zach Sabre Jr. manages to transition back to the angle. Beautiful. He's got the legs as well. Great fights. Oh, and he's, he's transitioned here to a single Boston crab. Tying him up! Oh, oh. And a bow and arrow at SDF there, driving his forearm across the face of Marty Skull. Oh no! He's got the right arm as well! And this is what this is one of his favorite techniques out over oh. Marta, Trying to hyperextend the shoulder and he's biting him! The Sex Saber Jr. Never ever down his technical and physical prowess and the the ring in terms of being able to tie you up into knots and, well, he's afraid to uh, take advantage of this situation as well at times. That's not vegan. Oh, kick into the hamstring, the left leg, and now the right, and one into the glute. Oh, God, that chop just brought Sabre down to one knee. Oh! All impact on that short European uppercut. And one back from the villain. Now kicks into the arm and shoulder. Oh. Oh. The look at Zach Sabre Jr.'s face. Goes for a double leg. Oh, my just transition over. Sabre Jr. makes a pin. Oh, the villain reverses it too. And now Sabre's on top. In deep there, but only getting it soon. Of course, the two men know each other so well. Matt, you'll be able to test for this. Sometimes tag team partners can make the, uh, the most ferocious enemies and indeed the most difficult opponents. And that's it, because you, you don't just team with them inside the ring, you live with them, you train with them, you literally do everything with them. And, and what I find interesting, both men have gone their separate ways and have learned new tricks. And, oh, they are oh, oh, just bloody here. Sorry, Glad. He just walked straight in, but almost ran straight into that chop. Explode here in Alexander Plus. Oh my god, it was a chop to the throat. And you can see Sabre clutching in his throat, gasping for air. Oh, and close line now. Sacra refusing to go down. Oh, kicks it up. Tries to kick out the left knee. Oh, and a kick into the chest takes down the villain. Yeah, you mentioned that both these men have gone their separate ways, both great ambassadors for British wrestling around the world. The crowd showing their approval here from for Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr., of course, a former champion in Japan and the States. Marty Skull has been a champion in the States. Was Mike Skill, a former Progress Wrestling Champion. Two tight Progress Wrestling World Champion. Sabre Jr. now trying to jockey for position. I can't believe he's trying to get the arms out for Nelson now. The villain. Using his, his power to, to not let Zach get the, 
the full quota of that full Nelson. Yeah, and you can see he's clasping his hands in that butcher's hook, putting extra pressure on that full Nelson. Oh, no. My has got the fingers of... Oh, Zach Zemtrini manages to escape out of it. Too much time. Oh, and into another octopus stretch. A beautiful transition oh, from Sabre. Wrenching the left arm back. Trying to get the other arm. Oh, my, skill trying to fight it. Oh. oh, both arms now. Standing over Plata. Just work, like you said, Glenn, working both arms in his position. Oh, but now my skill has managed to escape out of it. Could be going for a surfboard attempt. And has the right arm of Sabre Jr. now, both arms. Building momentum as he rocks Sabre Jr. back. Surfboard stretch from Marty. Oh! Oh, he's, oh. oh, he's got stuck on the, the hooks in, if you were, as he goes for that chicken wing. He's got the chicken wing locked in. And that is deep. His hands are clasped shut there. That is an uncomfortable position for Sabre to be in. So he's trying to break the hands. It does. Makes it to the ropes. It's interesting to see Marty go for the, 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 the cross face early. There's usually a bit of panache, a bit of razzle before it, but just going straight for it there. I was just going to say that. I think it's good to see that perhaps in the time he's been away from progress, Marty Scarl has learned, because I'm thinking back to Chapter 28, when that razzmatazz song get kicked in the face by Tommy Ed, he's, he's perhaps learned and, and grown a little bit in the villain. Marty Scarl. Choking deep. Oh! My goodness! Vintage Marty Scarl. That finger snap echoed around Alexandra Palace. Oh. What are you saying about Rasputin's guys? Oh. He hasn't forgotten. Taking advantage of the pain of Zack Sabre Jr. is it? Zack Sabre Jr. You're a good punch! Two! Hey! Hey! Zack Sabre Jr. takes advantage! What did I say? What did I say? Well... It was ultimately the Rasmataz that undid him again. The villain Marty Skill making his comeback to Progress Wrestling. But the winner of the Open Challenge has to be said, sometimes you can get somebody you barely know in an Open Challenge. And Zack Sabre Jr.'s Open Challenge was answered today by somebody he knows very well, and he took advantage of that situation by defeating the villain Marty Skrull. Yeah, and it's that European clutch, that pinning move that he has honed in Japan. A well-traveled man, and he is giving him the one, two, three tonight, Glenn. Yeah, we, you just talked about it, Glenn. In the Open Challenges, we saw it with uh, former Atlas champion Rampage Brown. He was undone by getting an opponent he wasn't familiar with, and that's uh, that's something you, you can run into in an Open Challenge, but that was not a factor here. Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty Skrull know each other about as well as two opponents can ever know each other. Well, if that was indeed the rubber match in progress. Still friends. Well, of course. Brothers fight, don't they? As the crowd at Alexandra Palace rise to their feet in appreciation for the former two-time progress wrestling champion.
the villain Marty Skrull. Your winner, Zack Sabre Jr. Who knows? I hear from the villain. Thank you. 
more unusual than uh, they actually bore them, obviously, because there's more of them. And what there is, is there's some kind of like royal circle of you guys that are all here, with a little gap between you and everybody else, all you guys here. Now, we've got one more match in this half of the show. What I'm going to say to you is, before we play a little hype video for it, all of you people here, I mean, you're probably in the fucking splash zone. <laughs> so all the best, because... Two people who have been a big part of our company for quite some time want to settle their differences in a death match. So please, everybody, pay attention to the screen. Oh! Oh my God! Trent Seven just took a swing at Jimmy Havoc, who's who's next to us on commentary. Oh! Oh my god, Jimmy Havoc has just knocked out Mark Haskins! I mean, I know it wasn't intentional, but at the end of the day, Jimmy Havoc cost Mark Haskins this match. Oh! I, he bought Mark Haskins a birthday present! He's wrapped him in, in birthday paper! Measuring Gibson! Oh no! Same thing happened again. Haskins and Havoc looked to be on the same page. But this time it was Haskins with a chair, leveling Havoc. Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins believe they should rightly be Progress Champion, but right now they're in contendership for the Tag Team Championships. Pete Dunn come to oh. ringside! He's going to Vicky Haskins! That's Mark Haskins' wife! Oh, oh. no! Low blow by Trent Seven! Stacks having up to it! Oh! A pretty strong start has stolen it! Something of a war of words here between these two. We know there's a professional rivalry here. Vicky Haskins trying to calm down her husband. I'm not really sure Vicky should be the person to be in the middle of these two. Mark Haskins! It's not letting anybody put their hands on his wife, especially after what just happened with Pete Dunne. Oh, they two have lost it with each other. There's a big issue here between Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins going forward. You know, I, I, I hit Jimmy. Jimmy went down. We got into a scrap. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I genuinely am. Um, since coming back to progress, I still haven't um, been able to win back my progress wrestling championship. And it's something that I want so bad that it tears me up inside. So frustrations have been a little high, so I'm, I'm sorry that I took that out on you. When you say your title, it's, it's my title. Progress fought tooth and nail to get it off of me. You know, you did just give it up. I think our main event tonight could be a tag team match between the team of Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins against the team of Travis Banks and Pete Dunn. Seems like Jimmy Havoc and Mark Haskins cannot get on the same page at the moment. It's the first time I've ever seen somebody get chopped in the chest, which constitutes a tag. Oh! oh! Well, these aren't tags anymore, they're just tagging each other with forearms! Haskins and Havoc just rolling in the ring!
for the X. Mark Haskins is knocked under. Huge slide to the outside. Oh, God, this is going to be carnage. Well, they didn't waste any time on this one, did they? Oh, oh no. I'm really scared. Well, we've called them street fights. We've called them no disqualification. Right now, we've got ourselves a death match with the king of the death match and the king of the goths, who just... Uh... Oh! Is that a... That's a crutch from an audience member, yes. I mean, what wouldn't it be? So who knows what's under that ring? We're well, talking about the king of the death match. We're talking about Jimmy Havoc, and we know there is this side of Jimmy Havoc that comes out whenever the Progress World Title is in the picture. We've seen the return of the axe here, and if you don't believe that that man will have any intentions of using it, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Well, um, always beware when Jimmy Havoc wears white. Yeah, I was going to say, that the, that side of, of Jimmy Havoc, I think it wears well. And we, we, we've seen this before, we've seen... Oh, the, God. Oh, a bag of something already. Oh, who knows? <laughs> we've, we've seen this metamorphosis of Jimmy Havoc and go from the sort of fun-loving, playful side to this, this absolute maniac that would do anything, anything to win a match. Oh, oh. throws a chair at Mark Haskins. And on the flip side of that, we've got Mark Haskins, who, who to my knowledge, can't... Oh! That was a baking tray. I, I didn't see it until after it made a very loud noise. I, I was going to say, to my knowledge, Callum, Mark Haskins has never had a death match, no. ever. Mark Haskins has never been in a death match. Right? He has had no disqualification matches, but this is a whole other level. But to be fair, Mark Haskins can take it to another level. Think about to Chapter 18. He had a no disqualification match with Rampage Brown. Where he fish hooked the mouth of Rampage Brown with a coat hanger and poured salt into his mouth. And that's... That's pretty fucking as, deafening. As you do on a Sunday afternoon. And you've got to believe as well, Haskins' motivation here. This all escalated when Jimmy put his hands on, on Vicky Haskins. Oh, oh, stapler! Staple gun into the head of Haskins when he did that. He was going to go for the paper cuts, I think. Oh, God. Haskins has got the staple gun now. We've seen the level, even even Bogus, you know, you talk about uh, the tournament of death, well, we've seen the level Jimmy Havoc can go to here, think back to the fans bringing the weapons match against Will Ospreay, the match he had with Pete Dunne, the match he had with Paul Robinson. Yeah, but, but Haskins, this is a different Mark Haskins, he's fueled purely by rage because his family was put in the line of danger, and his motivation for that Progress World title is always his family first. Jimmy Havoc unsurprisingly bleeding. Here comes the shotgun! Kick into the of Jimmy Havoc! Staple right in the forehead has of course busted Jimmy Havoc open. This, uh, this of course will um, will not be one for the squeamish. And a uh, little folding chair, I've seen some action already today. Jimmy Havoc now being propped up. Oh. Haskins uh, chops him across the chest and now... Oh, God. Oh. I mean, Haskins, I particularly know for his culinary skills, but, uh... Oh! Havoc catch him coming in with a forearm. Here comes Havoc! Oh! No. No. I mean, these two started as friends. Mark Haskins made his return to progress to save Jimmy Havoc from British Strong Style. They yeah, team together. With Flash Morgan Webster, they get the, uh... Coins nickname Rehabilitation X. Oh, what is that now? It's four cups, whatever it is. I absolutely no idea. Four cups, one husband's. Well, you never know what's in a box, though. Could be Zack Sabre Jr. Is that a Nerf 
gone. Oh, I meant to say he's a firm man. I think it's Sonic who parked this map. That's a dinosaur. Yeah. It's the last time he lets Jack do his deathmatch prep. Haskins doesn't know how far oh, he, he needs out. to go or how far he will go. Jimmy building out of steam. Just. Yep. He picks it up, Ryan Pan. Oh! It's a single axe handle with that Ryan Pan. The axe handle might come later. Oh, God, that's not. I, I didn't see where it went. Managing to avoid the second one, but. These chairs are tied together. Indeed, and uh, so they're not going to move. Don't be fooled by the the luxurious padding. They have very sharp edges on the metal. They know yeah, they're, also, they're also metal rather than plastic. They know B and Q uh, oh, long God. chairs here. They're yeah, fighting in the crowd here. And they're working their way over here. Oh, a bad feeling about oh. this. Having now. Sending Haskins up to the, st the stage here. You can see there's some leftovers from the ladder match up here. Oh, God. Haskins manages to fight off. Can we go for a death valley driver? Oh, please. No. Oh! through that table. situations like that we're trying to keep the crowd safe from this situation So it no, has didn't. to be a pin, in the, a pin or submission in the ring. Well, I really consider myself a deathmatch aficionado, but um, as far as I was to understand, Pinkles had to come in the ring, so Mark Haskins has had to take Jimmy Havoc, and indeed that's what he's doing now. Makes the cover on Havoc, and Jimmy kicks out before the count of three. I 
have to admit, there's a, a big part of me that wanted it to be over there just, just so this would be over. Oh, and a knee! Never mind the plunder when Mark Haskins is here with a knee like that. It's been hit with a bowling ball. He's an incredibly dangerous striker, an incredibly dangerous grappler. But that just rocked the head of Jimmy Havoc back. That's something Jimmy Havoc doesn't always get when he fights other deathmatch specialists. Someone who is a legitimate knockout artist. Indeed, I mean, the tournament of death that Jimmy Havoc won this year was more known for its, its plunder than it was its, uh, its striking. And, oh, oh my gosh. Christ, did you see the dust fly off that when he put it down? Oh, just in case you thought it was polystyrene. Jesus fucking Christ. We saw this with Joey Janela in New York. I was going to say, Mark Haskins perhaps has been taking some tips from Joey Janela. It was Joey Janela who ended up eating that suplex on the back of his head onto the cinder blocks. Strike again, a kick into the side of the face of Havoc. It's almost like a hushed tone over the crowd at the minute. It's, it's quite uncomfortable. It's, I can't, it's, it's an uncomfortable and expectant and really quite horrible. No, nope, not that one. Now this looks eerily familiar. Oh god. Yeah, they, I mean, replace the cinder blocks with light tubes. You have the scene recreated from chapter 21. Two cinder blocks laid side by side now. Haskins, I think he's attempting to suplex. Havoc through it. Havoc hits back with a forearm and another. And a third on Haskins. Oh, and both men catch other at the same time. Haskins gets the better of it. Goes for a oh, kick. God. Oh, my Jeez. God. there in the progress ring. And now it's, it's Jimmy Havoc on his, his hands. Look, it's like wrist that, tape. It's like athletic tape. It. Jimmy Havoc is, is taping the, the wrists of Mark Astis. God, is he? Jeez. He's really taping them. This is now very uncomfortable. Jimmy Havoc is there. Oh, no, oh, God! Oh. Oh. Havoc, Mark Haskins is trying to... Oh. Trying to defend himself against them. Everyone watching knows just how painful this is. Oh my god! Oh, no, no. Oh. oh god! Oh no. Oh. Oh. Is that salt? Has done before. Makes a cut. You get to see blood from the mouth of Mark Haskins. This isn't wrestling. This is torture. Jimmy Havoc is torturing Mark Haskins for stepping into his world. It was Mark Haskins who said he wanted to fight Jimmy Havoc in a death match. He, he said he wanted to beat him at his own game. The fact is, Mark Haskins is learning a very painful lesson right now on why you don't wrestle Jimmy Havoc in death matches. Oh, oh. stable to the side of the head. I said, he's trying to fight back. Oh! DDT onto the 
the side of those cinder blocks. Haskins has got to be out. That's both arms. That's it, Rainmaker. It's got to be out. One, two. Oh, my God, Mark Haskins is... After all that abuse, he just kicked out of that Rainmaker. We know how resilient Mark Haskins is, but you, you mentioned the word torture before, and this is painful to watch. In some way, Mark Haskins may need to just stay down for his own good. For his health. For his family, family yeah. Exactly. Looking across at Vicky Haskins at this point. I mean, safe to say, concerned is an understatement. Oh, Jesus. Another table will be brought into the equation. I think now positioning it against the... The second turnbuckle here. That's just trying to cover up here. That atmosphere in the room, Matt, it just simply hasn't changed. It's got worse. Oh, God. I think things are going to get worse now. Oh, Haskins here. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Come on. Oh, my Jesus. Haskins manages to avoid it. He goes, ah, oh, shit. Oh, my We said earlier, if you doubted Jimmy Havoc would use that axe, put that down to bed now. Oh, At this point, no. Vicky Haskins is, is coming down to... No. Vicky is just... To so ringside with a pair of... There's a pair of scissors. She's trying to cut Mark free. I mean, it's a fair fight. I mean, the crowd are booing here, but the, the man with his, his wrists taped together. Yeah. And she's only trying to protect her husband. It's completely understandable. But she needs to get she's out of the way. with... Mark, at this point, about using that chair. I think he's been trying to... Perhaps suggest that enough is enough. I, think, I mean, not a, not a terrible idea for Vicky Haskins to try and stop some of this oh. barbarism that's happening on the outside. Vicky Haskins is... Maybe she's got a better idea. Oh, my God. Mark Asker 
moves that barbed wire boarding seat. Cinder block dust bounce off the ring. Now that board is propped up in the corner. And that bag. Oh, I wonder. Please let it be sweet. There's a lot of drawing pins. A, l a lot of drawing pins. And we said this before for our transatlantic friend. You might know there was thumbtacks. We know there was drawing pins. And Mark is just oh, oh, that's gonna put all the brakes. And Jimmy put himself in the drawing pins. I did not work out well for Jimmy Havoc. That's a great banger. Havoc kicks his way out of it. He's having into the ropes. Elbow. Oh my god! Ah! Death Valley driver onto the drawing pins! And again! Oh! You asked for this, Haskins! He won't stay down though! Look at the back of Mark Haskins! And it blocks it! I'm sure you're not a third time! Oh my god! Oh! Havoc's back! He drives Haskins back! Into the bottom line board! One! Two! Oh my god, Jesus Christ! Mark Haskins' back must be like a pinboard! Haskins trying to get to his feet! I think he's tied up! Misses the acid rain maker! Haskins up and over! Can't roll though! Havoc stuffs it! Ah! Haskins hands in it! His hands in his face! He's trying to block it. Oh, but every time he goes down, more and more go in. Oh, a great man going to the dry pit! One, two! What? What? I thought that was three. Was straight to the barbed wire baseball bat. This is Jimmy Havoc now. This is the Jimmy Havoc. This is the death match. Tournament of death winner, Jimmy I'm sorry, I don't have words. It's one of the most brutal matches I have ever seen, and, 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 and I, I feel weird using this word, but, but I have so much respect for Mark Haskins. He entered Jimmy Havoc's world, and, well, we all know what that world consists of. Yeah, we saw a different side of Mark Haskins, perhaps. We also saw a different side of Vicky Haskins. I think that's something we'll explore down the line, but Jimmy Havoc has won this war between former best friends. And you've got to think Jimmy Havoc, he is now re repositioning his eyes on the Progress World Championship. Well, you can call him the king of the gods. You can call him the king of the death match. But today, Jimmy Havoc is a winner at Alexandra Palace as he defeats Mark Haskins in Mark Haskins' first ever death match. And let's not take it away from Haskins. He put it in a hell of an effort, but Jimmy Havoc proving why he is the king of the death match.
some of you have chosen to come in fancy dress, which is a wonderful thing. For example, in the front row there is Paul Nakano. That is a fantastic, fantastic option. Um, where's, where's Shinsuke? Where is he? There he is! There's Shinsuke Nakamura, everybody. Is it not that? Like, thanks for fucking pointing that out again. Uh, <laughs> um, where's Necro Butcher? There's Necro Butcher, everybody. Um, that legitimately might be the real Necro Butcher, I don't know. And someone earlier came up to me, and I've not seen this person yet, someone earlier came up to me and said, there's someone dressed as mankind and it's fucking insane.
Gentlemen, welcome to the second half of chapter 55, and we've had rather a big announcement to go with this rather big match. Of course, it's the Atlas Division Championship match between Marinal defending against Timothy, Th Timothy Thatcher and Volta. September 30th, 2018, we will be at the SSE Wembley Arena. We hope to see as many of you possible there, but right now we've got three very big lads, and we tend to like big lads wrestling here at Progress. Oh, I've been waiting for this one all night. Three of the best professional wrestlers oh! on the planet. Double on hook suplex from Thatcher to Riddle into the corner to prove my point. And there's a very interesting dynamic here, Callum. Yeah, with both of these mem members of Rink Camp, but the two remaining members of Rink Camp at this point, the team together, that team together at Progress Boston champ for the tag team titles. And but the Rick, competitive... Rick Camp, yeah, Rink Camp is well fighting. Ring camp is about fighting. They respect each other so much, they wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, we've said it before, Callum, on commentary. Ring camp isn't a nice little slogan. It is a way of life. It is a mindset you must oh! to compete. His faults and just chops the soul out of Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, those frying pans that people were getting hit with earlier, that's what being chopped by Volta's like. Oh, and a kick to the back of the head there by Riddle. Was of course at Progress New York. Oh, oh what a release suplex by Riddle. Yeah, Matt Riddle won back the Atlas title from Walter after losing at Chapter 51 in Birmingham. And uh, that should became number oh. one contender. With oh, and that's the sleep. That sleeper is in early, and that is indeed. But Riddle manages to get to the ropes. Oh, Jesus, what a German release suplex by Volta. Takes over. Riddle, and a German for Thatcher as well! And butterfly release suplex. They don't call him the ring general for fun, folks. 
this is such an incredible clash of styles you know we talk about big lads wrestling as a style but it has so many dimensions you've got the agility the mma background of matt riddle the raw power of walter volta i have to say i think there's no better heavyweight wrestling that heavyweight style anywhere on the planet today and the incredible grappling of tim thatcher he saw him out grapple doug williams two weeks ago oh. it's interesting you mentioned that victory over doug williams thatcher's got the momentum coming in he's beat Williams on his way here as well as Donovan Dijak in New York City belly to belly oh. suplex from Thatcher Yeah, that match against Donovan Dijak was what got him this title shot And this is what Thatcher does. He's so efficient with his movement and his technique in the ring This is why he's such a suffocating and dominating wrestler. This is exactly the sort of control that Thatcher would want in a match like this, but obviously you've got that dynamic. There's three men. It's not a one-on-one -on -one contest. There's, there's moving parts in there, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how he adapts to that. Uh, this rule set here. Yeah, yeah, efficiency. Matt Riddle reverses the gut wrench, and floats over. We, we saw this against Martin Stone in we saw Vegas, against, Boston. We saw it against Jeff Cobb, the Super Strong Style. This is the guy who invented this move, or, or was pioneering it, and sort of handed it over to Matt Riddle, his tag team partner. Surely not. Oh, oh God! Incredible hip strength! He should have popped his hips to get him over there! Not again! Oh, my God! Deadlift by Riddle! And takes oh. Walter over! My God. Matt, you mentioned the efficiency, of course. Tim Thatcher relocating to Germany recently. Ring of course, born in... WXW in Germany, and you know, Germans fairly well known for their efficiency, and they, they're exactly right. That's what uh, that's what Thatcher's become over the last uh, five years of his career. And what's that? That's all saying about metal sharpens metal. That's why Thatcher is taking this journey, almost a pilgrimage, to keep improving and keep being on the top of his game. Training with the likes of Volta, as well as the likes of David Starr in oh! Germany. Oh! Kicks by Riddle, and then a shot by Volta to nullify. But Thatcher has the right leg, ankle lock. And look at Timothy Thatcher. Oh, my! What a kick by Falter! And up kick by Riddle, catches Falter. Falter in one corner, Thatcher in the other. Thatcher comes out. Oh! Got a kick by Thatcher. Got have eyes in the back of your head here. Oh, and Falter wipes out both the Progress Wrestling Atlas Division champion and the, the number one contender. Yeah, this match came about as a sort of confluence of events, if you like. Matt Riddle beat Walter for the title, and then in, Bo in Boston said that, that Walter could have a title match whenever he wanted it. Tim Thatcher won a title shot and beat Dijak, and it was Walter's suggestion to say, you know, I'm going to get my Walter's, Matt Riddle's Pompey Bay rematch. Why don't you come in that match as well? Respect the ring camp. Uh, they, they shook on that at Boston, and that's how we ended up here. Well, the, the chance of Das's good yarn, Das's progress. I mean, Progress was built on British wrestling, but this is three proponents of the style we like here in Progress from oh. around the world. Matt Riddle, we saw this was the main event of Progress New York. If there weren't marks on them already for the, the heavy weekends, they were marked up to... Oh, hell, oh, my God, the impact. Matt, do you never learn? Oh! oh. Volta Just. kicks out the right leg straight into the shin! And we have seen Volta do this before. He isolates that shin and uh, that ankle area as well. He's got the sleeper in though, but I think Riddle's got enough separation to have some breathing space there. On Thatcher now. Sleeper of his own on Walter. Oh! Neelith catches Thatcher in the corner! Oh my god, the impact of that boot from. Volta and German release suplex! Riddle's up! No. Volta goes, goes behind on the white lock. Matt Riddle lands on his feet! Surely not. Oh my god! Not with Volta! And. Oh my god! Suplexing! That's just suplexing! Matt Riddle who landed on his head!
Riddle is almost limp. He's lifeless. He rolled to the outside. Yeah. My Riddle is pretty much impervious to German suplexes. But that one hurt. Big lads wrestling indeed. Here's the ring camp battle. Oh, Fatch has got that war face on. Oh. Forearm from Thatcher off, off the chopper. Alter! Oh, God. Oh! Oh, three of these men wear these chop marks as a badge of honor. Oh, palm strikes by Volta! And palm strikes back from Thatcher! Could we go inside the suplex by Thatcher? Off he passes the cover! Two it! But he can't two! Oh, straight into that, that arm lock there, maybe looking for a Kimura trying to. But, and Volta reverses out! But finds the arms! And catches Thatcher! What a show strength by Volta with the power bomb! One, two, and Thatcher again kicks out of the counter too. Oh God. I'm going to think Thatcher perhaps something of an underdog in this match. Of course, the current Atlas champion, Battle Royale two-time Atlas champion, and the former champion, Volter. Oh, there's that sleeper. It's locked in. In fact, wisely here is on the side. He's relieving the pressure a little bit. He's trying to keep a little bit of separation here, but keep... Oh, to the table! Oh, no, 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 no. Ah! Back sent on! God, I've never seen Riddle do that before! If you're, if you're watching on the right camera angle there, you would have seen Matt Riddle just after he landed. Utter an expletive that I think tells you exactly what that move was like. All impact on everybody involved in that, including the back of Matt Riddle. Gotta be honest, if I was gonna dive on someone, I wouldn't dive on Timothy Thatcher and Volta prone on the canvas or not. Oh, there's that knee. That knee has knocked people out before. Sleeper by Volta! Riddle manages to fight out. Volta has him up. Powerbomb position. Riddle escapes. Ducks under the arm. Volta saw the upkick coming. Oh my god, what a show! Oh Strength by Riddle! Bro to sleep! And Sherman Suplex with a bridge! That's it wisely. Just chopped out the leg there. And takes Riddle over. Cover his own tip. One, two, and... Oh, you mentioned before about progress being built on British wrestling. That technique right there, the shades of the British wrestling legend Billy Robinson. These three men are the modern-day example of what catch wrestling can contribute to professional wrestling. This riddle. Riddle now hammer strikes and then Thatcher's That's trying... He won the title. He's trying to cover up. And Volta saving his... Well, I'm not sure he's saving him so much as taking the opportunity for himself. Yeah, straight one, to the one fall to a finish. Oh, big kick by Thatcher. And one by Riddle. Oh, leaping knee on Thatcher. One foot. Falter, Thatcher still on his feet. He's got Thatcher. Oh, oh my God. Ah, God style tombstone. Riddle makes the cover. It's coming in. Well, Falter. Nearly German suplex riddle on Thatcher! Oh! What a kick by Volta! And the ring general now! Thatcher looks to be out. That's Riddle where he wants him! Power bomb in the middle of the ring! Riddle's up! That man is not human. Ah, what a lariat! Oh my god! One, two! Who was nearly decapitated two seconds earlier? My goodness, what a match! This is everything I wanted from this match, guys. Three big lads battering the hell out of each other. Giving it absolutely everything for the Atlas title. Oh. I tell you, it has to be said, Matt Riddle's carried round the world. Oh! The first championship of Matt Riddle's career, he does not want to relinquish it here. Oh, again with this. 
Oh, no, Riddle manages to duck, goes behind. Two knees! Holds the wrist, three knees for Volta. And Thatcher now, he's almost sneaking in the back door, but he doesn't look very... I don't think he was sneaky, I think he's just got very wobbly legs. Oh, and Thatcher's tied up in the ropes here, his, his, his ankles caught as Riddle's placing Volta to the top row. Oh my god, Riddle with Volta oh. off the top, surely not! And Volta, shift his weight! Has he? Oh! One, two, and Volta's right! The winner is match and new progress wrestling Atlas Division Champion, Volta! Volta has won the Atlas Championship back here at Alexandra Palace! What an absolutely incredible match. What an incredible show of what the Atlas division is all about. Oh, my God. It's just incredible. Walter, now a two-time Atlas division champion, dethroning Matt Riddle once again. What a showing for all three men. Timothy, Timothy Thatcher, the X Factor, of course. They've done three singles meetings between Walter and Matt Riddle. And Volta, it's not two to two, if you like. But Timothy Thatcher and the former Alice champion, Matt Riddle. I mean, I wonder what's next for, for those two men. The fact is, they're in the middle of the ring. It's your ring general, the new Progress Alice Division champion, Volta. here at the commentary table. We saw Marty Skrull turn up earlier on. You want to talk about unexpected debuts, ladies and gentlemen. Wolfgang is in Alexandra Palace, the former ICW World Champion. Oh my God! As the W's are thrown up here at Alexandra Palace! We've never seen Wolfgang in a progress ring before! That's a former ICW World Champion, former ICW Zero G Champion. Of course, had a great showing in the WWE UK tournament as well. Yeah, but Callum, I can tell you, he's only got eyes for one thing right now, and that is the Progress Atlas title. Wolfgang has made his presence felt here at Alexandra Palace. One year ago, we crowned the first Atlas champion of Brixton, Rampage Brown, and he took on all comers in an open challenge, and it seems like Walter is ready to take on all comers as well. Well, Wolfgang, as you mentioned, has a lot of pedigree in the world of wrestling. I'm going to be honest, if that's the first challenger to Walter, I'd be very, very happy. But the story is, Matt Riddle, no longer Progress Wrestling Atlas Division Champion. The ring general stands proud in the middle of a Progress ring.
friends, the following contest is an eight-man scramble match to crown a new number one contender to the Progress Wrestling World Championship. Going round the ring, introducing the competitors. First of all, to my left, representing from Broadway South in London, weighing at 210 pounds. This is James Strangler Davis! <laughs> oh, next from Soho. Next, heading from Cardiff in South Wales, weighing in for 150 pounds. This is one lightning, the Mark
Well, oh God. I mean, it's, it started as pretty much you were expecting an eight-man scramble match. One ball to a finish here in our penultimate match of Chapter 55, Chase the Sun here in the Alexander Palace. And, well, I think the, the fans are just happy to have anybody but James Drake or Zach Gibson at this point. We, we had chaos between Mark Haskins and Jimmy Havoc. We had chaos between the big lads. Now we've got FSU and the Grizzled Young Veterans. This is a different kind of chaos. Mark Andrews dropping onto both members. It's a rematch from two weeks ago. And Eddie Dennis suplexes both members of Grizzled Young Vets. Yeah, how did that match end up a couple of weeks ago? Well, the Grizzled Young Vets came out on top. Let's see if Eddie Dennis got arm. Oh, Chief Deputy done on the outside, tripping up the Pride of Wales. And sends him. Oh, rip first. There goes Mark Andrews. Up over the top rope. Catch is done coming in. I shan't call him Damien today, I promise. Oh, Mark Andrews over the top. Oh! So much going on in this match. Oh, well, these two are certainly no strangers to each other. Deputy Dunn's a. Uh, yeah. Agenda here in progress is based around Jack Sexsmith and his uh, <coughs> soft spot for uh, fun now. For what? For, for you only got one. Arm catch, reverse DDT there by Sexsmith. Here's James Strangler Davis. Davis roll. And Davis in incredible condition has lost a, a lot of well timber for one of a bad turn for. The, Drunken showman. Flash manages the Jimmy's arm drag. Uh, up and over. Another arm drag on Davis. And that standing inward sense on from Flash Morgan Webster. If I may. Oh, oh the Crystal Young bets. Oh, Parting of the uh, Try and squeeze in some stats here at some point. All the best. <laughs> Oh, oh. It is, it is every man for himself in this match. And it seems that every other member of the... I can't just remember, this is to crown a new number one contender for the Progress Wrestling Championship and... Ah, oh, fuck it, why not? MSU! Over the top, Robin, wiping out all of the other competitors in this eight-match scramble! It's that time, Cam? Yep. Well, we have one former Progress World Champion in this match. We have three former Progress Tag Team Champions and three, let me just count out three, former MPS Trophy Holders. Oh, see Eddie Dennis there was going for the uh, next stop driver. Mark Anders, we've seen him. Taking oh! the ride from Gibson. We've seen Mark Andrews assist Eddie Dennis with that next stop driver before. Gibson cuts off sex with in the other corner. This is chaos. We can't even really go into all the dynamics of play here. Oh, and that forearm that broke the jaw of Damon Moser just caught Flash Morgan Webster on the... Oh, God. Top corner now. Oh, four corners now occupied. Oh, it's, yes, it's Chief Damon. Mark Andrews managing to stuff Supex. Sexsmith as well, and... Well, that's one way of getting it out of his hand. It's too big a room for that small megaphone. Good. Oh my god. Oh! Davis on Andrews! Gibson on Sexman! Dennis with a deadlift! James Drake on Flash Morgan Webster! And he's been holding the very ages on David! Chief Deputy Dan Sorry! Four superplexes in a row from the eight competitors in this contest! That didn't look very much fun for 50% of the competitors in this match. Eight people in the match. Well, it's Eddie Dennis, the standing tall, though, so far after that stalling superplex. Oh, the newly full time Eddie Dennis. Keep your eye, Deputy Dunn, looking for that springboard jawbreaker. But in comes Gibson with a backstabber. The weight of Chief Deputy Dunn going down as well onto Dennis. Andrews with a diving cross body takes down both Gibson and Dunn, but here comes the strangler. Now. Oh, what a that glory special. Yeah, glory special indeed. And also now, takes the legs of 
That's Morgan Webster. A gory stretch and it busted crab by Strangler Davis. We talked about it against Connor Mills, the, the incredible technical acumen of, of James Strangler Davis has, as you say, been a bit of a drunken showman in the London riots, but now he's turned over a new leaf. We might not like it. Oh, God. No! With Mark Andrews as a backpack, dumps him on Flashball Webster with Sexman now on the top rope. Diving double stomp with extra UG power from Sex Smith. With BDSM, as he calls that. Oh, the big diving stomping move. Yep. And here's Coco. It wouldn't be a big show without Coco. Competitor number nine. James Drake, though, he's having none of that. Oh, forearm into the jaw of Sex Smith. He's still that before. Oh, Dick. him up on the shoulder. Drake has him up. Oh, Gibson manages to put on the brakes. Drake goes behind, and again. Grizzled young veterans here. Oh! oh. James Drake finally pushed into the shoulder block on Gibson. Meeting of the minds. Jack Sexman, of course, beats that Gibson in the first round of the Super Strong Style tournament. Then pinned him in a four-way as well. Oh, he might have... Well, you know, it's Jack Sexman, he's equal opportunity. Cockles for everyone! If one of them taps, Jack Sex with someone a contender. Oh, Sex with onto the... Oh, God! Um, yes! That, that's, um, that's a thing! That's a thing that just happened. Yes. To the face of Damien Dunn. What a gentleman. Sealed it with a kiss. Sex with that... Oh! Thrust to the... Throw by Gibson, puts him into Drake! Oh, assisted spinebuster. Drake turning him over into Boston Crabbin. Oh, we've seen this before. He's looking for time to lock the Shankly gate. But sex with taps at this point, I mean, we can't have two number one contenders. It's been that, done. That's Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews! Oh, well, that's self-explanatory. Double face lock spike. Andrews... Flashman's not worked out well for Mark Andrews. Oh! Well, teamwork on display here from Grizzled Young Vets. Oh, but both Flash and Andrews had it scouted. Now Flash into the corner. Back elbow by Davis. And another one for Mark Andrews. Davis now trying to tie both men. Yeah, double What's stranglehold that? he's looking for. It's matching the, the, the strangle of both. Mark Andrews and Zach Gibson. Oh, what a kick by Eddie Dennis. Straight to the drop. There is it out. One from Dunn. Takes down the plan of Wales. Super game from Sexsmith. Gibson catches him in the corner. It's on the top rope. Kicks his legs out. Oh! Chief Jack Sexsmith, and there's a ticket to ride as well. Sexsmith could be out here. Front kicks by both. That's Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews. Webster takes advantage. Stunned on millionaire. Flash Morgan Webster spoke in a series of videos about what this means to him. Spear by Dunn. Here comes Sexsmith. LGBT. Davis now. Oh, my goodness, the impact on Sexsmith. Here comes Dennis. Oh, close on takes down Davis. Dennis doesn't see Zach Gibson behind him. Oh, assisted Enziguri there. And there's teamwork again with a super kick and a net breaker. Eddie Dennis had a chance to win a title match against Pete Dunne. Oh, big head, but you know what it would mean to him to get another title shot. Jesus! Well, the Chief Deputy went to that a little bit too many times, I think. The capacity crowd here at Alexandra Palace starting to get behind the mod father. He's got two options here. Oh, 
my God, we haven't seen this in a very long time! Pinball wizard from Flash Morgan Webster. We saw that against Zach Gibson in the second Natural Progression Series final. A Flash Morgan Webster won. We've come down to the two here. It's Dennis and Dunn left in the ring. And Dunn catches Dennis coming in. He goes Chief Deputy. Dumped down with a Urinagi by Eddie Dennis. I guess you're now looking to work together. Yeah. We've seen this before from Friends Stand United. Foot. Oh! Well, I think he called it audible. Oh! Oh! Well, Dennis is DDT James Jake on the floor. This is crazy. James Drake now sent it to the ring. Dennis up. Next up, driver. Could be the assistant attempt. <laughs> Nobody making. Ryan just saying for Eddie to pin him. As he takes out Sexman. Eddie can be the one contender too. And, oh, Flash Morgan Webster. Selfless of Mark Andrews though. Telling Eddie Dennis to make the pin. Yeah, that tells you everything you need to know about the friendship between those two. Mark, a former Progress champion, knows what it would mean to Eddie. And well, he was there with him celebrating the night he won the National Progress Series and the Progress Champ Championship. Big four by Eddie Dennis. Coming over the next top driver. Oh, reversal from Flash into that strangler. Uh, that, that front face lock. He's wrenching back on it. Dennis is in trouble in the centre of the ring. Now Mark Andrews is heading up to the top rope. Oh! Over the top of the rest of star press! Lands it! One, two! And Mark Andrews is the new number one contender! Well, the shortest lived reign in Progress Wrestling Championship history goes down to Mark Andrews, and it looks like he's got a chance to right the wrong. Mark Andrews is your new number one contender. Yeah, it's been nearly four months, since, so four years, since Mark Andrews won the Progress Wrestling Championship and held it for all of about 10 minutes. And you know it's kind of eaten away at him he wants another shot. He also thought he had a one against Pete Dunne earlier in the year. But unfortunately, Chris Roberts reversed the decision. It would mean everything to Mark Andrews be Progress Champion again, even though he tried to give the win to Eddie Dennis. Well, you mentioned it, Callum. And it's another big disappointment for Flash Morgan Webster as well. Well, yes, if you're watching the videos recently, Flash Morgan Webster, the nearly man. We had two solid teams, really, in this contest with the, the grizzled young veterans in FSU. But Flash Morgan Webster, pinned by Mark Andrews, who is the new number one contender. Oh, hang on. Flash Morgan Webster just... Oh, hand. oh my God. Webster, back into the ring. Oh, Flash Morgan Webster. <laughs> For the... Uh, there might be part of it that wanted to do that. We're seeing frustrations boil over here. You know that Mark Anderson... Flash Morgan Webster know each other very well. They're standing in the ring. The new number one... Can... Oh, my God! What? No! God. Eddie Dennis just hit the.
Dave Nimmer. Eddie Dennis is just here. His, his tag team partner Mark Andrews with the the next stop driver. Oh my! Eddie Dennis is bang away. Fans drinks it. Just blew it. Spit him. Travis Banks, it seems we'll be choosing each other's opponents in the run-up to Ali Pali. There's a reason why Pete Dunne is the Progress Champion. One of the most disliked men in professional wrestling. Pete Dunne on the, on the stage. Oh, oh the knee. knee! One, two, and three! Pete Dunne with the assist. Travis Banks has hit his speed bump on the road to Alexandra Palace. Pete Dunne has just left the commentary position. Keith Lee just caught him and... Oh, power bomb! And Keith Lee has just defeated the number one contender. Oh, Pete Dunne, incredibly proud of himself. Now we have... Our tag team match and the unlikely duo of Travis Banks and Pete Dunne against Jimmy Havoc and Mark Askins. Kiwi Crusher in the middle of the ring! Oh, and Pete Dunne's picking up the pieces, the bitter end. The shit-eating grin on Pete Dunne's face says it all. All right, here come British Strong Style. Progress is mine. Progress is mine. is mine. Fans aren't his. 
and the progress wrestling fans only recognize one champion. And at Alexandra Palace, the king of all Travis Banks walks up the progress wrestling champion. from Travis Betts means that our main event is underway here in Chapter 55, Chase the Sun. It's for the Progress Wrestling World Championship. The number one contender, the winner of Super Star 16 2017, the Kiwi boss on Travis Banks, challenging one third of British Strong Star, the current WWE UK champion, and the defending Progress Wrestling champion, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. And this has got Big Fight Feel written all over it. Yeah, and I want to talk about Travis Banks and the journey this man has been on. He has travelled all over the world, and when he first arrived in this country, he worked from the ground up, he built rings, he helped out oh. the shows, 
and then he went on to win the biggest tournament in independent wrestling. Oh, what a knee from Travis Black taking down the champion. In super strong style 16, and he has earned every single thing he has got, and he has earned his spot in oh, the main event of Ali Pali. What a cannonball went Banks in the corner. But since winning Super Strong Style, Travis Banks has been on a terrible run of form against the opponents put in front of him by Pete Dunne, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Jack Gallagher. He's come up short in all of those matches. And that's something we've talked about before, Matt, that Travis Banks does have a history of not being able to get it done on the big occasions. Oh, Trent... Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. Oh, sneaking in the back door there, trying to... Safe, Pete Dunn. This, of course, well, it's certainly not a handicap match. In fact, Travis Banks has had, ironically, the most success recently in a handicap match, beating both Tyler Bate and Another. Trent Seven in uh, Progress New York after an injury to his tag team partner, TK Cooper. Well, Trent and Tyler are trying to get in the ring here. And now Travis takes out Bate, takes out Seven, sends to the outside. Suicide dive, that low angle, and another one! Jesus Christ! There's nobody who dives quite like Travis Banks! He'll fight all three members, he doesn't care. Yeah, and, 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 uh, they might have the numbers advantage, but oh, Travis Banks hold on, has hold on a second, ring. guys. Just pretty strong style. All three members, including Pete Dunn, Chris Roberts is... Chris Roberts is counting, but the title cannot change hands on a counter. Pete Dunn, Trent Seven and Tyler Bates are heading for higher ground. And Chris Roberts is up to four. A pretty strong start of... I've left the ringside area and Travis Banks is... Uh, a pretty strong start of... made their way back to the stage with... Uncle Sledgy, each one of them carrying a, a sledgehammer to the ring. I mean, Travis Banks has no backup here. Unconfirmed reports they got those as Easter presents from Uncle Paul. I mean, this is not no disqualification either. No more, any more than it's a handicap match. This is, just goes back to the, the, the point that British strong style think they're bigger than progress. They think they're bigger than professional wrestling, and, and, and they are determined to ruin, ruin the biggest match in progress history. And well, Chris Roberts calling for the ejection. Chris Roberts! Chris Roberts ain't taking no shit tonight! Well, if he can read lips! Chris Roberts! Oh my god! Fred didn't be done with a sledgehammer! I think Vicky Haskins broke something in Chris Roberts! He's taking enough shit for one night. He drove his back to Bruce. Well, Pete Dunne may have had Trent Seven and Tyler Bate in his corner, but at least it looks like Chris Roberts was in Travis Banks' corner, or at least the corner of fairness. Whether you like it or not, Chris Roberts calls it down the middle as best he can. And now these two. Oh, Pete Dunne now. Sending Travis Banks into the chairs. Can you mention earlier on these chairs? Don't move. They're, they're attached. No book scale today. Don and Roberts remonstrating. Oh my god, oh, Dunn's all his crucial member. Yeah, Pete Dunn! Oh! 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 He's taking out all of the crew. Oh, and that. Travis Banks, Pete Dunn's unhinged! Well, I can attest to that. Sending Travis Banks again into the chairs on the, the outside. I've got to be honest. He done this proof, he'll put his hands on whoever he feels like. With Chris Roberts in the mood he's in right now, I'd be loath to get on the, the wrong side of him. 
Done now is backs by the nose. Oh. Ripping and his mouth just got the fish hooks in. Now Pete Dunn taking Travis Banks uh, towards the where the fans came in it. Oh, and a forearm into the face of Banks. Oh! God. Off his feet! And now Pete, Pete Dunn heading back towards, towards Reeside. I'm not sure I've ever seen Pete Dunne so aggressive. I mean, this has been coming, this has been building over the past few months. He put his hands on RJ Singh, he's been putting his hands on crew members. Now Pete Dunne... telling Chris Roberts to make the count. I think Travis Banks has started crawling. Travis Banks has, got to be honest, a fair old distance away from the... It's up to a four. Ring at this point. Banks still on his knees. He was launched into those chairs. Counts at six. Fred willing him on. Pete Dunn telling Chris Rose to count quicker. It's a count of eight. Is he going to make it? And Banks makes it into the ring before the count of ten and then eats it. Boot to the side of his head for his troubles. Yeah, Pete Dunne is fully in control of this match so far. And it, it, I've mentioned this before on commentary. The thing that Pete Dunne does better than anyone is survive. He'll do anything, anything to walk out with that title that he, he claims to not care about, but his actions are speaking louder than his words. He knows that title gives him leverage, it gives him power. Yeah. He disrespects it, but he knows now in particular that the Trent Seven and Tyler Bed have lost the Progress Wrestling Tag Team Championship to CCK. British Strong Style are at a disadvantage here in Progress because they don't hold all of the power and they held the power through the championships. If Pete Dunne was to lose the championship to Travis Banks tonight, all of a sudden, the leverage in oh, in not just changed. not just progress, but the world of wrestling changes. Being progress wrestling champion at the moment means that you are at the top of your game. And Travis Bank is just having his his shoulder almost bent out of socket there by the bruiserweight. One other thing I should mention: I, I'm very low to give Pete Dunne credit, but we've seen before while he likes oh. to use British strong style, he doesn't need them to get the job done. Remember, he beat Zack Sabre Jr. in his very first title defence last December, all on his own. And Pete Dunne has been taking the shortcut recently, and right now he's got the wrist control of Travis Banks' left arm, and he's just paintbrushing him with disrespectful boots into the, the jaw and the neck, and Banks is just... He's just frustrating Banks as the strikes get harder. Front kick into the face of Pete Dunne, folding him up like an accordion. This is Travis Banks opening here. He needs to take the advantage. Pete Dunne has been champion since November, and he's taken on all comers. Jimmy Havoc, Mark Askins, Mark Andrews. And now Travis Banks trying to pull a crew member in front of him. And again, Pete Dunne rolls. Back into the ring after that forearm to Banks on the outside. And Banks is following him. Dunn needs to stay on him here. We know that Travis Banks is incredibly resilient. Oh, Banks floats over. Rolls him through. Oh, super kick straight to the jaw of the champion. And as you said, he, he Dunn should have stayed on top of Banks. He gave him that separation, gave him that chance to get. Some, uh, some recuperation in there and, uh, and pay for it. And Pete Dunn having to regroup a little bit. Oh! Oh, the look on the face of Pete Dunn says it all those kicks into the chest of the bruiser weight. Oh my god! Turning the chest of Pete Dunn silver and red! If you've ever wondered why he's called the Kiwi boss, so that is exactly why. Go behind back. Travis Banks dumps Pete Dunn on the back of his head. 
Thomas Bugsy. Banks needs to follow up on the, the German suplex now. He comes back into the corner. Is that the elbow? Seen it before. And the third time, shotgun drop kick. Second row, double stop oh. into the shoulder blades of Pete Dunne. And the man wearing the silver and black of New Zealand is feeling it right now. Speaking of New Zealand, we might see and New Zealand across the ring. Right in the face of Pete Dunne. The Banks needs to stay on him here. Another one here. Oh, and another! And New Zealand into the face of Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne looks like he's trying to roll out the ring. Pulling out of the apron. And Dunne bites the hand. Oh my god, should he not? Oh, no. oh my god! Pedigree on the apron. Travis Banks' his head just came thundering down on that metal support on the apron. And once again, I mean, this is the champion's advantage. If, if any, if either or, e either of the men or both of the men are counted out, Pete Dunne retains the title. Travis Banks needs to not only get himself back in the ring here, he needs to get Pete Dunne back in the ring. Yeah, really but is he going to be able to do that after that pedigree? Chris Roberts is a count of seven now. He's not trying to stop Travis Banks, perhaps. They're both rolling at the same time, almost a mirror image of each other at that point. And he doesn't trust any Banks, goes back to the outside. Kick to the stomach by Banks. Oh my god. Kiwi crash oh. on, on the side of the ring. Oh, do you hear? Impact on Pete's back. He got oh. absolutely all of that. Do I need to mention that's the hardest part of the ring? I think the noise alone will cover that one. I think it's what's oh. been said. Oh God, the, the spine of Pete done landing on the edge of the ring. The Banks is back to his, his feet in the count of five. He's, he's got to get Pete done back in. That's absolutely. smart from Travis Banks. Exactly right, Calvin. You can only pin him in the ring. But Banks now has done exactly where he wants him. Cannonball! Oh. But Dunn has him up! It's the deadly what? Ball. Oh. Here comes the Kiwi Terminator! Banks ducks alive! Size the heaven! Could have been here. Well, we've seen Travis Banks put away many a man with that move. Pete Dunne is still in this fight, and that is exactly what it is. This is a fight. Dunne manages to get a foot up and then kick Banks away in the corner. Oh! A bit of rope. Pete Dunne really doesn't belong up there. Great flexibility shown by Banks as he manages to get his foot up into the face of Dunn. Could be going for second row superplex. Oh, oh my God! Dunn turned Banks inside out. Makes it go a two. Oh, an adjustment there from Pete Dunn turning that that move into a second row X-plex. I've never seen that before. I'm exactly right. Second row X-plex it was, but Pete Dunn managing to shift his weight coming off the. The second rope. Oh, just, oh, my oh. just the heel of. Oh, oh. kicking to the side of that head of Travis Banks. There's the cockiness of Pete Dunne. Oh. 
go for the... Pinedo! He reversed it into a DDT! He spikes the champion on his head! Banksy's got him down, that's that lion's clutch! Dunn gets his hips up. Oh, finds the ropes with his foot. That's how he made Tyler Bate tap to win the Super Strong Star 16 this year. You see Pete Dunn, you know, love him or hate him. Here goes Oh, my boy. God! Pete Dunn just caught Travis Banks in midair with a forearm, and Banks just free fell to the outside. And now he's taking it back outside the ring. Oh, my God, no. Oh! Tombstone on the outside. Oh, my God. Dunn now sending Travis Banks into the ring. Travis Banks could be out. He's dead weight here. Going for it again. There's the bitter end. Makes the cover. One, two, and... Travis Banks... Travis Banks just kicked out of the bitter end! Now, Matt, that's... As much as that's a standing in its own right, that's now going to have a psychological effect on the champion. There has been absolutely no one that has kicked out of the bitter end. That is, it is literally what it says it is for so many of Pete Dunne's opponents. But it, Travis Bank has, has found something here. He's found a second gear, a third gear, a fourth gear, whatever it is. He's showing some resilience. And, and, and you're right, it's got to be a psychological impact on Pete Dunne. Yeah, he, do, he looks like he's not letting it bother him, but I think that's all a front. Well, Pete Dunne has certain things in his armory pedigree in the middle of the ring. Lateral presser! Travis Banks kicks out a run! Uh, a, a lackadaisical cover from Pete Dunne. And you can hear the, the crowd here at Alexandria Palace. Oh! oh! to carry it to the back of the head of Robert. The line's close. He got tapping. He's tapping. But Chris Roberts is down. Referee Chris Roberts caught in the back of the head of that Enziguri from Peter. And now the... The second oh. rope is broken as well. It's chaos here. Bitter end. He done calling for he another referee. Take advantage. Here comes Joe. Joe Lanner into the ring. No, not like this. Two. Oh. We have a referee down. We have a rope down. The rope has literally snapped. He's all Travis Banks was using that that corner before to build up that the head of steam for those back elbows. In the force of Travis Banks hitting that that turnbuckle has snapped the rope. He done, he's going up to the top rope. Oh, Banks cuts him off with a forearm and oh, this is very dangerous here. <laughs> Travis Banks taking his life into his hands here. He's trying to to get Pete Dunn off the. Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. One, two, and oh. got a second. Transcendent. Chad Seven and Tyler Bate tried to make the save, but take out referee Joe Allen anyway. The former Progress Tag Team Champions. They've just taken out referee Joe Allen on the outside, and now. Oh, now they're going to go into the ring and help out Pete Dunne. I mean, you can't call a disqualification if the referee who's just been. Knocked out is is the referee. Oh, Trent Seven oh, stuffs him with a bar driver and a Tyler driver onto Travis Banks. 
Oh, now Pete Dunn. Oh, pedigree on Banks. Well, there's no official. Chris Roberts is stirring. Oh, Chris Roberts is up. Chris Roberts one. Chris Roberts two and... Travis Banks kicks out! I said this once before about Chris Brooks, but Travis Banks just took all of the moves in the world. Three on one, a broken rope. Did you hear the progress ultras, Glenn? The, 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 the shouting that the Pete Dunn can't beat Travis Banks. A literal oh. chant of you can't beat him directed at Pete Dunn. Well, he's the, got the sledgehammer. This could be a repeat of what we saw two weeks ago. The Kiwi buzzsaw, the Kiwi Terminator. Certainly the most resilient man in, in progress at this point. And here come CCK! The Tag Team Champions! Kid like goes and Chris Brooks! Front kicks! Double knee lifts on the champion! Here come the best boys! Oh! Stereo dives from CCK have taken out British Strong Style. The new progress active champions! Taking out the former champions! Shades of the Super Strong Style 16 final. Once again, it looks like CCK are going to dispose of the other two members of British Strong Style. And now we've got one on one at Travis Banks! Waste lock! Pete Dunn manages to land his feet! Oh my god! Pete Dunn's got the sledgehammer! Oh! Sledgehammer! Into the. Cut off the neck or the jaw of Travis Banks as Chris Brooks is removing track 7! The referee Paz! That's about third. The last referee! It's academic at this. Oh my god, Travis Banks kicked out! Nobody! Nobody is kicked out of a sledgehammer shot from Pete Dunn! What is no it going up. to take? What is it going to take to keep Travis Banks down? It's 2,000 progress ultras here at the Sold Out Alexandra Palace! Chan, you can't beat him! And Pete Dunn! At this point... I'm not sure Pete Dunn can, but... Oh my god, he's got the stunt hammer in the back of the head! Well, something in the water with the referees tonight, but... Travis Banks has got it. Ah! Ah! Banks is down with the stunt hammer! In the middle of the ring. One, two. Oh. In a lion's clutch. Lion's clutch. Ah! He taps. Big Dunn has tapped. Alexandra Palace comes to its feet in unison. We have a new Progress Wrestling World Champion. After a broken rope, three officials interference for British Strong Style. Travis Banks overcame absolutely everything that Pete Dunne threw at him. And, and, and this is... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Pete Dunne is just... What? Hold on. He dunked just, I mean, he, he threw the title on him, but... I'll tell you what, after the year we've had, that is a sight for sore eyes. Travis Banks with the Progress Wrestling World Championship in his hands. Matt, you've spoken about his journey. And this is it. For everyone out there, the questions about following their dreams. Look at this man right there in front of his parents here. His journey has led him right in. And all the way from Auckland to New Zealand to be here with their son as he is crowned.
the Progress Wrestling World Champion. What, what an event! I can see a tear in Glenn Joseph's eye. Woo. Yep, yep. I think that's me done for the day, folks. There are some onions up here. I'm going to sign off for now. This is... <laughs> that was an incredible show. Thank you to everyone who supported Progress for the last five years. We'll see you in chapter 20. We'll see you in chapter 56, rather. Not 26, that's back in time. <laughs> My broadcast partner's here. Callum Leslie and Matt Richards will take you home. We'll see you in 56. We'll see you at Wembley Arena on September the 30th. Ah, oh, fuck it, boys. Let's just go home, shall we? Let's just Let's go it. home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for supporting Progress, for bringing us to this point. That was Progress. That was Chapter 55. And that is your new Progress World Champion, Travis Banks.